So yeah, I'm glad everybody's here. I, really quick, I just want to say something. We've been doing Central Stand Up for a little over a year now. This is our fifth show, and this is our third one with more than 100 people. So round of applause, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Uh, nobody said I couldn't do it, and I proved them indifferent. Right the fuck on. Guys, if you don't know, we're here for a comedy contest. We're going to have 12 different comics come up here. They're each going to do five minutes. We're going to pick our winners who we like. Four of them are going to come back, do one more five-minute set for you guys. So if you look at your tables, you might see a bracket. Here's going to be the order of the show. We are going to start in the laser fog division. That is Shane Lahare. That's Dee Dee. That is Zach. Then we also are going to do the Wizard of Hops. Then we're moving on to the Girlfriend Division and then the Bling Blau. So if you look at your sheet, we're just making a little baby you. All right. I, I can't wait to get this shit started, guys. I've been thinking about this all day. Um, how, how many people watch the Olympics? Cool. Three really polite people who didn't want to make too much noise. Awesome. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah, the, the Canadian relay team in the 400, they kind of, they got us. They got US. It sucks. It sucks. We ended up not with the gold. But if you think about it, US beat the shit out of Canada this summer with Kendrick and Drake, right? <laughs> Fuck, would not want to be that guy. Hey, has, has anybody heard of, that, heard of that card game Phase 10? Yeah? Okay, I don't know for sure, but I feel like that's Uno for xenophobics. See, what I do is, to get the room quiet, I tell a joke. <laughs> and for real guys, there's a lot of people in here, so please kind of keep your table chatter to a minimum. That way we don't ruin the show for everybody else who's paid. Um, let, let's, let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Is, uh, does anybody know the term asexual reproduction? Yeah, it sounds pretty cool until you realize nobody else is coming. <laughs> hey, speaking of asexual reproduction, um, I'm trying out a new look recently. Uh, yeah, and I, I've gotten a lot of comments so far this week. Like, um, somebody was like, oh, hell. That is the coolest 10-year-old I've ever seen. <laughs> so Somebody else asked me if I really pretended to drown so that way I would get Wendy Peppercorn to make out with me. Right? Somebody came up to me and they said, hey, I thought Tony Hinchcliffe was taller. Yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> Uh, one, one of my daughter's friends came up. She was like, hey, what grade are you going to be in? I was outside trying to talk to people, trying to sell some tickets. Out of nowhere, some lady, did your mom drop you off? <sighs> Woof. Woof. Hey, really quick. What do you guys think is a harder lie to believe? That J.D. Vance fucked a couch or that I'm really funny? <laughs> Oh, guys. I'm going I'm to do one more before we actually start the comedy show. Thanks for coming out, guys. Just be careful where you're at, okay? Because I was driving around in a neighborhood, and I saw a speed limit sign. I had some extra words on it, which kind of messed me up. It said, drive 25, save a kid's life. Now, I don't want to be the bad guy. But, you know, like, 25 is really going to fuck that kid up. Right? All right, guys. Thank you so much for just letting me talk for five seconds. Now, really quick, what I want to do to make our very first performer get all them little jitters out, get all them little nervies out, does anybody know how to play We Will Rock You on, like, the human body? The stomp, stomp, clap? Have we done that before? Guys, let's get that going really quick for your first comedian. Stomp, stomp, clap, come on. Let's get loud, come on. Woo! Get louder. 
This first guy, he is coming to represent the Laser Fog Division. He is a Wichita local, and his name is Shay Lahari. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Yeah. I got to get this out of the way before I start. I do look like this, and I look like this because my mom is white and my dad is Ellen DeGeneres. I got told the other day, like, I'm trying to start my own gender. I do know what I look like, though. I look like Ric Flair fucked Peter Griffin. Uh, not too long ago, I did a DNA test on Ancestry.com, and I found out that I'm 1% Jewish. Yeah, 1% Jewish, you know what that means? That is just the nose. I wish I was 2% black. And so does my girlfriend. I have a little uh, nephew, he's seven years old, and uh, he still can't figure out his words right sometimes. So like, for example, he doesn't say dinosaur, he says dino whore. <laughs> and I found out one he can't say the other day, because we were talking about like, what kind of candy he liked. And he goes, I like Reese's, and I like Snickers, and I don't like cunts. And I was like, that's okay if you don't like girls, but you can figure out when you're older. And he goes, no, cunts, I realize he's talking about Nestle Crunch. And I did not correct him, and I did not tell his mother. <laughs> What I did do was I sat him down and I had a conversation with him and said, hey buddy, crunch your mom's favorite word. <laughs> she also likes to be called a dinosaur. <laughs> I love this kid a lot. I, babys I was babysitting him the other day and he came up to me and he goes, hey, Uncle Shane, why'd we call bacon bacon and cookies cookies when we cook bacon and we bake cookies? I said, I don't know, but I should stop sharing my weed with you. I'm going through a breakup right now. You can figure out why. Um, I haven't told her yet. Well, like, kind of. She's in the back. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. But we, uh, when I broke up with her, it ended up being this hour-long argument. She was trying to last word, and she was like, you know what? You don't deserve me. I was like, yeah, I deserve better. What's your sister's number? <laughs> Turns out her sister was a Nestle Crunch, too. We broke up for a lot of reasons, but I think the main reason was she described dating me as like finding a pug in an alley. Like it kind of wouldn't help at the end of the day, do you really want a pug? Need to help me here breathe heavy, you know it's gonna die soon. She didn't treat me like a dog though, because she wanted me to lick something I didn't want to lick, she just was peanut butter on it. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> it's a pro pug crowd tonight, all right. <laughs> Like all couples, though, we had like cute little nicknames for each other. Like, for example, I called her baby and she called me a pussy. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm on Tinder and Tinder sucks because uh, most girls' mains on Tinder have this new STD called children. <laughs> That's my mom's favorite joke. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. But the worst thing that ever happened to me on Tinder was about a week before I met Max's girlfriend. I matched this girl and she sent me a text and said, send me a dick pic. And I wanted to comply, but I didn't want to send her a picture of my dick, so it was one of the Google Images. And I stole a dick and I sent it to her. And she sent me a message back right away and says, why is it black? I said, I'm 2%. That's my time tonight, thank you guys. Shane Mahari. All right guys, we're gonna keep this thing moving nice and fast. This next person, I'm super excited. This is his, her first time coming on the CSB stage. So please put your hands together for Dee Dee. Now how you gonna make a big girl get up on the stage? You know you're supposed to have something small for me to get up on first. My gosh, this is my first time ever being here. Hello everybody, can you say hi back? This is the first time that I got this many white people to say hello to me at one time. I'm scared. Like none of them. Who does taxes? Cause I'ma get I'ma get mine out of this. Who does? Nobody. Nobody. Shit. I'm Didi Mariposa. I am a comedian. I'm an actress. I do a lot of different things. But the one thing that I don't do, most definitely don't do, is come up and decide to do a competition. But I am here because Travis is amazing. Y'all can clap on that. Travis is amazing, and he decided to allow me to be in his. Well, now that we're done with that, here comes the shit show. 
So anybody have kids? Anybody got kids out of there? Aren't y'all fucking happy school has started? My God, I've never seen $200 worth of food go away so fast. Shit, my teenager, he's 10 years old, preteen. He loves to say I'm a preteen, not a kid anymore. And I'm like, that's okay, that's okay. You're still gonna do preteen dishes. You're still gonna vacuum the preteen way. And I'm waiting because his older brother had decided to tell me that he is no longer wanting to go by him. He wants to go by they. Anybody else dealing with that? Nothing against those who go by those acronyms, but I'm 40 and I, I, I stopped going to school a long time ago. And, and I don't need to know anything new. So when he stated that, I was like, okay, so I'm waiting on my 10 year old to say I go by they as well. I let him know right away because you know, black parents are a little bit rougher. I say, if you think you're gonna go by they, let me tell you something, bruh. Cause at that age, they only understand certain lingo. Let me tell you something, bruh. Um, <laughs> If they decide that they are not gonna do their chores, then they are not going anywhere, nor getting Roblox at all. And, and kids wanna go by different things. And for me, I go by different things too. My pronouns are Cash App and Venmo. Feel free to call me that anytime and feel free to drop a couple of coins in it as well. Just, you know, cause you got it. Just saying. Being up here, I was kind of worried because the stage looks like it's presentable, but it could possibly be that one where if I wanted to drop it like it's hot, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I'm just saying, it just seems like that type of thing. I recently learned that being the age that I am, I can no longer do what my younger sisters do. So my younger sister decided that she wanted to go to a club. I said, fine, you know, 40, trying to still be young, like most of us in here at 5.30, because that's our time, because we are in bed by 11 o'clock because we got work on Monday. Yeah. Nobody has work on Monday? Ain't that some shit? I got work on Monday and I'm still gonna be able to go. You had Shane up here, who is a wonderful person, by the way. I can never get my perm or my weave let me, let me be real. I can never get my weave to look like his. Can't find that blonde. I tried, I think it's like 613 or something like that for that color blonde. The real, real platinum, platinum shit that I have to do. Thought about it. Where's Shane? Shane's not here anymore. He went to find his mom with the cowbell. Cause that's what happened the last competition we had. I would have won that shit if she didn't have that fucking cowbell. Okay, nothing's uh, like, I, I seriously tell anybody who comes with me, you're coming to my show, bring a cowbell. Bring that shit. She was ringling it all and she was sitting right next to me. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know when I went to my job and I had a shift that she would be there too. With a cowbell. Wonderful. I've learned also that being the age that I am that Bra shopping is a little different. I used to be able to go to any kind of Victoria's Secret and get a bra that would fit me, but now I need it for it to fit the baby back fat. Okay, there's nothing wrong with baby back fat for those who have it. I'm just saying, make sure you have a bra on the back too, because you need that to be lifted as well. Or duct tape, that's what I've been using. It's only 250. I can't believe it, I am in such shock. Are they more in shock that I'm up here and I'm a comedian or that I'm this tall, big black bitch who will probably fight? <laughs> I'll fight for y'all. Tell them that y'all know somebody black who will whoop they ass. Everybody got that black girl who's in their job who talks so much shit and you wish you could say something to her, but you can't because you don't want to come off racist. I'm the person that you call. Y'all don't have to be racist, call me. I'll fix it, I'm just saying. My name is Dee Dee Mariposa, the black girl that you know, just in case. Any Kansas City Chiefs fans? Any Kansas City Chiefs fans? And that's why I should win, Travis, because I'm sporting the Kansas City Chiefs shit. Just saying. Thank you, guys. Round of applause for Dee Dee, everybody. All right, we got one more person in the laser fog division. I'm excited for this. We got another newbie coming to the stage. This guy got in a car, 
possibly rode or drove all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So please make him feel welcome. Everybody, this is Zach Amen. Thank you. Keep it going with Travis Cagle, everybody. That's right, I drove here from Tulsa because the other Tulsa comic is a lady, wouldn't trust that. Hello everybody, how we doing? We feeling good, great to be here, good to be here. I have a boring job, anybody else? Yeah, good. A lot of you have exciting jobs, that must be nice. Are you hiring? I'll move to Wichita, I'll do it. I have a boring job, dude, I'm a bank teller. That's, that's what I do, I'm a bore, it's a boring job. But I like to tell people I work in finance, yeah? All that really means is I'm doing a bunch of cocaine in the bathroom. That's all that means, that's all that means. I recently just discovered cocaine. If you haven't done cocaine or you stopped doing cocaine, get back on that wagon, everybody. Get back on it. It is a lot of fun. I love it. It's the best drug in the world, hands down. I am a firm believer that if cocaine became legalized, coffee would go out of business. All of it. All of coffee. Starbucks would have to become Starbumps. Like, scooters would have to become snooters. Seven brews would become eight balls, you know what I mean? You're like, let me get that flat white. Oh, I rip it down. Start every morning perfect, you know? But it's a boring job, but every once in a while something cool will happen. Like this guy came in the other day to cash a check. No big deal, I'm doing my thing, he's on his phone. All of a sudden, porn starts playing on his phone. Yeah, like loud. Like full volume pornography. And he freaked out, he was like, oh my God. And he shut it off and he looked at me and he was like, memes, right? I was like, yeah, dude, memes. <laughs> like, just be honest, we all knew it was porn. I knew the exact video he was watching. It's one of the stepmom gets stuck in the stairs. I recommend it, it's good. It's good, sound quality's good, lighting's good. I had a hard time believing she was a stepmom, but it's Hollywood, what are you gonna do? You know? I did that joke in front of my stepmom, the tension between us is weird now. Every time I go home, I'm like, stay away from the steps, the sink, the washing machine. Because according to the internet, I can't control myself. <laughs> Gotta be careful in these streets, you yeah? <laughs> know? I think it'd be weird to date a porn star, really. I think it'd be strange, you know? She comes home from work one day, she's upset. You're like, what's wrong, honey? She's like, oh, they fucked me over at work today. And over, and over, and over, and over, and over. We couldn't get the scene right, you know? And so you feel bad. You're like, let me make you your favorite dinner. And she's like, oh, I appreciate that, honey. We did a group scene today, I'm full. Yeah. You couldn't introduce you to your friends. You'd be like, hey guys, this is We Know. <laughs> Big fan. Your video went off when I was at the bank the other day. I'm friends with that guy now. He's really cool. We have a lot of the same tastes. <laughs> I think it'd be weird to date a magician too, honestly. I think it'd be strange. She'd be like, honey, can you get my chapstick out of the purse? You're like, yeah, honey, I got you. And you're like, oh, a rabbit. Cool, okay. You said the front pocket? Oh, the big pole. Where's your fucking chapstick? Like, you would just get upset constantly, you know? You'd be like, honey, let's have some sex. And she's like, well, I've been on my period, but hold on. <laughs> yeah, women are gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by the fanny pack, but I'm not into them. Um, <laughs> I feel like the fights if you dated a magician would be ridiculous. You'd be like, oh, you can swallow a sword, but you can't suck my cock? Okay, honey. I'm gonna go perform in Wichita at Central Standard Brewing. I was thinking in my head, I was like, if this doesn't go well, I'm gonna start throwing these barrels like Donkey Kong. Be like, love me! But yeah, it's a boring job. A lot of people bring their dogs to my work, that's cool. It's sometimes better to see the dogs than the person. You know? And we have little treats for them, those little milk bones. And I, look, I like to look these people in the face just for a little fun game for me and be like, hey, does your dog want a bone? Because then they just look at me and they're like, does he mean? And I'm like, yes, I want to fuck your dachshund, man. Please send him through. He'll fit through the tube. He'll go right up and over. It'll be so easy. I'm kidding, obviously, Wichita. I'm a corgi guy. Thank you guys so much. My name is Zach Gaiman. Keep it going for your host, Travis Cagle. And keep it going for the rest of the comics. Oh yeah. Zach, aim on everybody. So, here's what we're gonna do. We are picking our first winner. This is gonna be the representative of the Laser Fog Division. 
I got this from an accredited college, so you know it's legitimate. So, here's what we're gonna do. By round of applause, we're gonna pick the best. So, let's go ahead and do an order. Let's start with Shane Lahare. Okay, registered, that was a three. Okay, let's hear it for Dee Dee. Okay, a little bit better, a little bit better. Now, how, how about the guest from Tulsa? Let's hear it for Zach. Okay, so I have no fucking idea who they like. Uh, no, it's, this is sad. This is the part of the show where we got to vote a couple people off the island. So, Dee Dee, Shane, go wait in the parking lot. <laughs> Go, go. All right, now let's get a quick little photo off with Zach. Hey, if nothing else, you get this great certificate. Yeah, I'll take that any day. All right, no problem. Now we are going to get this moving on to the next division, and we have our Wizard of Hops. Who's drinking Wizard of Hops right now? Woo! All right, you got a little home crowd. Uh, everybody, this is a Wichita local. He is the owner of Borsche, so go pay him for alcohol after this. Put your hands together for Steve Peters. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you, guys, very much. I appreciate it. Got the doors open. It's a nice wet heat that's just coming in. That's awesome. It's good shit. At least the microphone's skipping when I fucking get up here. That's amazing. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to try. There's a guy. I've been living in L.A. There's a guy I follow all the time. He's, every time I follow him, he's sitting down to do comedy. And it looks really comfortable. So I'm going to fucking try that shit. And, uh... All right. That's not... I don't... Dude, that guy makes it look so natural. He's in a wheelchair, but... Standing up is way better. That's, uh... All right. That's... Good shit. We have, uh, we have Oklahoma comics here. That's awesome. I love watching the weather in Oklahoma City. There's a, there's a weatherman down there called David Payne. And he's like the most dramatic weatherman you've ever met in your entire life. But the thing I love about Oklahoma City weather is every time there's a tornado, they're just like launch the fucking helicopter. They literally put a helicopter up in the sky next to the tornado. It's like, I fucking got that thing. It's right there, bro. Dude, Kobe's helicopter went down from fog. <laughs> the president of Iran's helicopter went down from fog. You gotta start hiring Oklahoma fucking helicopter pilots. That's all there is to it. I, uh, I travel everywhere for comedy, um, so I get to do lots of fun stuff. And, and uh, I was in Alabama a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a 100% true story. Everywhere I go, I try and get like a little snippet or something like that from that city that I go to. Uh, and this, <laughs> Alabama does not disappoint. I Googled it, the city that I was in. This is a true story. There was a dude there that captured a wild squirrel and then he fed it meth and taught it to attack people. It's a true story. You can Google that shit. Like, it's real. <laughs> Dude, so, like, this dude, he's feeding this squirrel a bunch of meth that's attacking people. The cops finally come along. They're like, you can't do that shit. And they arrest him and just let the squirrel go. <laughs> like, back out into nature. So in Alabama somewhere, there's this, like, tweaker squirrel just running around in the fucking wilderness somewhere. And I'm like, I could find that squirrel for sure, you know? Like, that's the only squirrel in the tree with no teeth, right? <laughs> All the other squirrels are gathering acorns for the winter. This squirrel's out gathering copper wire and catalytic converters. <laughs> I think it'd be easy to find. <laughs> Lived in Texas for a while. Love Texas, that's awesome. They have an abortion ban down there, so I decided if I ever moved back, I would open a store that just sells those velvet coat hangers. <laughs> I feel like that would be more comfortable. All right, that's... <laughs> We have single women in here? Prepare to feel horrible. 
Recently, there was a two-headed woman that got married. Literally. <laughs> You're single and the two-headed chick has a husband. All right, whatever. <laughs> and I think that guy's a fucking genius, dude. Like, how could he not be? She's like, my jaw's sore. It's like, all right, left, you're up. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> can you imagine, can you imagine the sonogram tech on that one? Like, oh, let's put a little jelly on your tummy. Check this out, see your baby. And then she's like, oh, there's a head, there's a, what the fuck is <laughs> How much Camp Lejeune water have you been drinking, lady? That's, all right. All right, we'll get in light. I, uh, if my chick swallows, but she's bulimic, does that count? All right, that was a quick one. Right. Did anyone else get the vaccine? Yeah, I did too. I'm worried about the side effects. Side effects are bad, dude. They have like heart problems and all kinds of shit. My cousin and his wife got the vaccine. Their last baby came out black. All right, I'm Steve Peters. Thank you guys very much. Steve Peters, everybody. Feel free to follow him on Facebook or throw a brick through the business window. Uh, <laughs> as we, we got another Tulsa comic coming up. I'm so excited for her. She is fucking hilarious. You guys are really going to enjoy this. Please put your hands together for Shauna Blake. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, y'all. So you can tell by looking, but I'm going to go ahead and confirm that, yes, I have been clinically described as solidly built. <laughs> During truck month, I tell guys I'm built Ford tough. <laughs> Bought him back to my place for a Toyota-thon. <laughs> they keep dodging me. You guys, I have to speak truck, though. I'm from a really small town. My parents met each other while they were working at the Tyson chicken plant. Yeah, so I come from chicken stock. That's <laughs> why so I have so much in common with chickens. You know, I'm a whole bird, but people really only care about my breasts. <laughs> I am from a really small town. It used to send me notices in the water department constantly that said, don't drink the water if you're elderly or pregnant. So I drank a lot of it. Because <laughs> I don't want to be either one of those things. <laughs> Y'all, I have always been terrified of getting pregnant. It's been my number one fear in this life, okay? I have friends right now who are out in the streets doing the Lord's work, just having unprotected sex. Yeah. With that guy, I guess. I won't even let a man come inside my house. And if they ever do, I'm like, no, no. And then you rub his nose in it. You have to. It's the only way they learn. It's the only way they learn. I've always been scared of getting pregnant. Back in high school, y'all, I was not having sex in high school. Thank you for your stunned silence. I appreciate that. I was the alibi girl. Anybody else? What, me and one other girl, you guys were all fucking? Okay. Good for you. Good looking crowd. I get it. I was the girl that all my friends would tell their parents they were hanging out with, but really they're getting railed by their high school dropout boyfriend behind the Piggly Wiggly. I was a good friend though, y'all. I would sometimes drive around and my friends would have sex in the backseat of my car. I was like a sex Uber. <laughs> a scrooper, if you will before Uber was even a thing. And my friends would be five minutes late for their period. They'd be like, oh my God, what if I'm pregnant? I'd be like, oh my God, what if I'm pregnant? They'd be like, you weren't even having, I was like, yeah, but I was really close to you while you did. They'd be like, that's not how it works. And I'd be like, we didn't know about secondhand smoke. <laughs> you don't know the science, okay? Y'all, last week I went to dinner, just me and my dad. And we sit down and the waitress immediately comes over and she's like, what would you and your daughter like to drink? Immediately assumed I was his daughter, that hurt my feelings. Do I not look hot enough to be pulling a rich older man? Or does my dad just look poor? <laughs> Sir, I don't want people to think I'm banging my dad, okay? I want him to wonder. <laughs> I want him to believe in both of us a little bit more, okay? That's all I'm saying. Yo, 
Y'all, I sometimes struggle with my confidence. I have a lot of really thin friends, you know, like wispy bitches, okay? <laughs> like the kind of ladies that people will say this about. They'll go, oh, oh my God, a gust of wind could knock her over. <laughs> I'm over here like gale force winds. <laughs> could not knock me over, okay? I have what you call a tornado shelter body. In fact, I like to call this Tornado Alley. Because most of the time, nothing's really going on. But boy, when it does, FEMA's going to get called. Because you're going to need gallons of water and tra trash bags. What I'm saying is this will devastate a trailer park. True. A real home wrecker. <laughs> Mobile home specifically. <laughs> That's kinda, <laughs> I wish. You guys, I'm not, I'm not that good at hitting on men. I'm not good at talking to men. Uh, I'm bad at it. A lot of you ladies are in couples. Maybe you're good at flirting. You know, you slow down, you touch your hair, you touch his arm. I don't do any of that. If I'm attracted to a man, I just speed up. I start flailing around, knocking shit over. I'm like a horny hummingbird. <laughs> Sometimes, like recently I was talking to this really hot guy and uh, I was wearing a jumpsuit that had pockets in it and I turned to him and I put both hands in my pockets and I went, this is like a squirrel suit. <laughs> we did not go home together. Okay, I'm really bad at it though. Um, do you guys know what the kids are calling it when they have game? I think I heard it. Riz, riz. yeah, you guys, I don't have Riz. <laughs> I do have Ritz, <laughs> crackers, <laughs> crumbs, sort of scattered amongst my bed sheets and my pillows because I eat a lot of crackers in bed. And then they kind of fall into my cleavage and the general folds of my body. And so what I'm saying is if you fuck me, I'll make you feel like a chicken parm. <laughs> Especially when I'm on my period. Wichita, you guys don't like that. Some guys, I say that and they're like, oh, I'm gonna crumb. I'm Shauna Blake, thank you guys so much. Vote for me if you like chicken. <laughs> Shauna Blake, everybody. Woo. Oh, okay. All right, guys, we got one more person in the Wizard of Hops division, and this dude is a little bit of a heavy hitter. He recently won Wichita's Funniest Person. Put your hands together for Derek Alders. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? I am happy to be here. I've been in the house all day fighting over what to watch with my wife on TV. I like to watch cool shit. She likes to watch dumb shit. We don't mesh well, right? Like the show I've been watching lately is a show called Bigfoot Hunters. Okay? All right, maybe I like to watch dumb shit. Uh, if you haven't seen that show, what it is, is these, it's exactly what it sounds like. These people are going out, they're looking for Bigfoot. One episode I watched, the guy goes, I'm going to go into the bushes and flush them out. I'm going to do the mating call. I'm like, you haven't been able to get a clear picture of this thing for 60 fucking years, but you know what he sounds like when he's trolling for pussy? <laughs> what if you got the mating call right? That could go very wrong for you. You know what they say about big feet. <laughs> I've been watching the show House Hunters. That's, my, or that's another show that we've been watching a lot of. I hate the show. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with it, it's this spoiled couple, right? They'll be like, this is Steve and Samantha. They're looking for their first home in the neighborhood of $438,000. You know, starter home. <laughs> They're like, Samantha needs to find a home with a pool so she can sit back and relax while the complete stranger raises her children for her. Then they show her the house, and she's like, oh my god, I love the vaulted ceilings, I love the crown molding. And then if they open the back door, there's no pool, and she loses her shit. She's like, there's no pool, I told you I had to have a pool, I need a pool. And I'm like, you spoiled little bitch, alright? Do that show on my budget. Like, this is Derek, he's looking for a home in the neighborhood of $38,000. Yeah. Derek's hoping to find a home with all the copper wiring still intact. 
He's also looking for a house in a neighborhood with as few sex offenders as possible. Because <laughs> I don't like competition. Uh, I like to remind everybody I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, speaking of sex offenders, Chris D'Elia was here yesterday. Uh, hope you kept your kids locked up. Uh, I just had a birthday recently. I just turned 40 years old. Yeah, 40. As soon as I turned 40, my mom calls. She's like, Derek, you're 40 now. You know what that means. And I'm like, yeah, that I can injure myself sleeping. <laughs> She's like, no. It means you got to go get a colonoscopy. I'm like, I'm 40, not 50. She's like, 50 is the new 40. I'm like, I don't know why you're up my ass about a camera going up my ass. All right. She's like, you need to relax. Quit being such a baby about it. They knock you out when they do it. It doesn't count if you're asleep. And I was like, bullshit, because if that's the case, Cosby never would have did time. <laughs> now that I'm 40, I'm tired all the time, I've noticed. I nap a lot. I don't understand why. It just kind of hit me. I thought maybe I should try self-medicating, you know? I was like, maybe I should try doing cocaine, right? <laughs> And then I looked at my bank account and I was like, maybe I should try selling cocaine. <laughs> that seems like the wiser financial decision. Uh, you guys know what I got for my birthday? Extend. Yeah, that little pill that makes your weenie get bigger. My dad is an asshole, all right? And cheap, because those are two pills from his stash. I'm going to get him back, though. I'm going to get even. He just recently lost his big toe due to diabetes. So for Christmas, guess who's getting flip-flops? <laughs> yeah. And a coupon for 10% off a pedicure. <laughs> I always call and mess with him all the time now, too. I'm like, hey, Dad, my car's broke down. Can you give me a toe? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I got my phone buzzing at me. I probably got a text messaging. I hate text messaging. I hate group texts. That's what I hate. I can't stand group texts. Folks, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you put me in a group text, you're getting a dick pic. Yeah, that's true. Ask my mom. Yeah. She's like, you take after your dad. I'm like, that's weird, right? <laughs> and bullshit, because in that dick pic, you can clearly see all 10 of my toes. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I'm Derek Alders. Derek Alders, everybody. Now we're going to get the rest of the Wizard of Hops division up here. Come on, fellas and fellettes. All right. Somebody is walking home with a piece of paper with some writing on it. And two other people are, I don't know, I don't really care. So, let's figure this out in order. Really quick, we have Steve Peters. All right, Shauna Blake. <laughs> Start the car. Uh, all right, and Derek Alders. I, I feel like we know who won, so if you have a penis and you're not named Travis, go away. <laughs> I'm really glad I thought about that because I almost didn't say if you're not named Travis. And then it's like, what? Everybody, Shauna Blake, she is your representative of the Wizard of Hops. Smile for the camera. Great, go away. All right. Now, guys, I didn't tell you guys this because I wanted to get some authentic reactions, but. At the end of the first round, we're going to be giving away some audience awards. We're giving away audience MVP. And we're also giving away audience LVP. So, take that in consideration. If you've been having a good time, turn it up a little notch. Fake laugh at some shit. Who cares? Flip side, if you're having a bad time, Pull out that phone, just fucking doom scroll. Do not make eye contact with anybody up here, okay? Be the worst you can be, and you'll get a prize. So, without further ado, we are gonna move on to the girlfriend division. 
Where, where are my girlfriends at? Where are they at? Who likes girlfriends? Yeah? Second fave? I, I'm really excited for this next cat. He drove all the way up from Tulsa as well. This is our third and final Tulsian. So please, for the whole state of Oklahoma, put your hands together for Peter Bedgood. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys, I love you Wichita so much. I, I have been looking forward to being inside of you for so long now. Uh, you know, you can save $10,000 by not hitting a road worker in Oklahoma, but you can save $15,000 by not hitting a road worker in Kansas. So give it up for yourself. I'm not doing well financially. Uh, is that funny? That's nice. My goal this year is to get into a tax bracket. I, I recently, yeah, you don't know what the fuck it is either? Yeah, okay. There's two of us. Uh, you guys doing well? Give it up for Jeff Probst over here. You guys, uh, I just went through a terrible breakup. You know you're too old to date a woman half your age when she breaks up with you twice because the first time you didn't understand what she was saying. I just remember she was like, I don't want to pop off, King, but no cap. The age gap discourse is cringe and I'm losing my ribs. I don't want to turn chuggy, skibbity toilet. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, until recently, I thought in a large prostate was something to brag about. I used to be like, hey, baby, guess whose prostate is enlarged for you? How about the three of us go get an emergency room somewhere? I'm not smart. Some things sound like they're fun and they're not fun, and other things sound like they're not fun, but they are fun. Like crotch rocket does not sound like fun, but it's a blast in a good way. But waterboarding, that sounds like a good time. You know, who doesn't want to go waterboarding? Huh? <laughs> or being a person of interest. Like I've always wanted to be an interesting person. <laughs> Kind of person walking down the street, someone sees me and says, hey, he looks like a person of interest. We ought to take him waterboarding. <laughs> I have kids, and uh, it's hard to believe in a government that would allow that to happen. <laughs> you know? I, uh, I love hallucinogenics. Woo. I love mushrooms. I like growing them. Thank you very much. Keep it going for mushrooms. You know you had too much to drink when you forget where your keys are, but you know you have had too many mushrooms when you forget why your keys are. <laughs> like, why? Why do we need them? Uh, no, I, I, I also like acid. I thought I'd be a good LSD dealer. I was wrong. I bought like five hits of LSD at like $1,000 a hit. Uh, anyhow, I'm out some money. I remember I took uh, all of it, and it was a very productive summer, you know? I remember watching this couple make sweet love all night long in the apartment complex, quad. And all night long I watched them, and the sun came and so did I. And then I realized they were a barbecue pit and a trash bag. So, uh, just say no, kids. <laughs> I've been doing this uh, comedy thing so long, I got a letter uh, in any alphabet, any, I got a joke in any letter of the alphabet. You can just throw up any, uh, just, uh, any letter of the alphabet besides Auschwitz. Jesus. A, B, C, D, Auschwitz, no. That's not a letter. I heard H, I heard H. 
So I was watching television at 3 o'clock in the morning. This commercial came on and said, do you suffer from hesitancy? And I was like, uh... I don't know. Like, what makes my dad sadder? The fact that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to turning gay or the fact that I, I'm waiting till he dies? Like, what makes a man sadder? You know, sir. Come on, you're laughing hard. I'll meet you after. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm Dollar General Splurgy. So, like, sometimes I'll spend, like, $69 on a polypeptide moisturizer from Drunk Elephant, and I'll totally waste it on some random Home Depot parking lot hand job. And for what? A green card? I'm already a citizen. <laughs> Joke's on him. <laughs> Guys, I love you so much. Thank you for having me out. Let's give it back to Trevor. Thanks, dude. Peter Benson, everybody. All right, next up to the stage, we're shifting back to some Wichita boys. Uh, if you guys have Spotify, YouTube, any stuff like that, feel free to check out this podcast. It is That Checks Out with Gabe and Felix. We have one of the co-hosts here tonight. Everybody, round of applause for Felix Johnson. <laughs> Shut up, white people. <laughs> you can just keep talking. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen me do comedy before, a lot of women buy me drinks during my sets. I mean, they're lesbians, but I mean, <laughs> they're women or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> trans women, though. Also women, also women. I think trans women are a lot like boneless wings. <laughs> Sticky, no. <laughs> no, I think trans women are a lot like boneless wings. They're not, as, they're not exactly the real thing. They're basically as good. And some people prefer them, I know I do. Delicious, we're talking about boneless wings, guys. I did ask out a trans girl, though. I did. It's 2024. We should be more adventurous. Did ask out a trans girl. I picked her up at her house. She lives with her stepdad and her mom. You know, dad wouldn't want to stick around. All right. <laughs> Why'd you laugh? <laughs> He's, are you a stepdad? Not yet. Why'd you think about it? You should know. <laughs> I definitely would keep track of kids that definitely weren't mine, but I was never mind. No, but I asked out a trans girl, went to go pick her up at her stepdad's house. He sat me down in the living room, gave me the whole talk, whatever you do to my daughter, I'm gonna do to you. I said, sir, I'm gonna suck her dick. What's up? I'll be back about 11.30. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't enjoy dating. I'm not the biggest fan of it, because I think I flirt like a football coach. Like I'll be in a bar. Hey, come here! Take my headset off. Hey! <laughs> Quick conversation. Hey, keep doing what you're doing out there. We'll go a long way. Pat them on the ass as they go. Get out of here. Scam. <laughs> I, really, I hate dating. I hate it. Because nothing means more to me than the Kansas City Chiefs. Woo! Nothing in the world that means more to me than the Kansas City Chiefs. And I learned one thing watching football. Over the last couple of years, there's exactly one white guy that can say the N-word. It's not him. <laughs> it's also really fun to go on a search for white guys in a room full of white guys. <laughs> no, but there is one white guy that can say the N-word. It is Travis Kelsey. Because if we would have got on that Super Bowl stage and said, I'm better than all you niggas, I would have been like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 93 yards in the Super Bowl. Come on now. All right. <laughs> we got to get it together as a race. Right. All right. <laughs> I, I, I love sports, but I do think it's ruining my life. It does suck. That's the only thing I pay attention to. Also, the only thing I pay attention to now is social media, but I don't like social media. There's this girl on social media that I follow that has uh, 
Big titties, yeah, they're gigantic. And I don't follow her because it's sexual. One day she's gonna fall over and I wanna be there to see it. That's all. She's gonna break in half, like structurally, never mind. <laughs> she's not sane, all right. Also, I also waste a lot of time watching movies. Yeah, no, all right, go fuck yourselves. Um, <laughs> never been to the palace, all right. <laughs> All right, it closed, I didn't do it. <laughs> Where's Bill Warren at? We can fight him. No. <laughs> I do like movies that include the 2009 Pixar film Up. But I think the hidden meeting in Up, that, that's the more important part. I think that movie, and the movie where Tom Hanks is the asshole for the very first time in his career, same exact plot. Those are just widowed old white men trying to kill themselves and minorities stopping them. Which, as a minority, I have a message for my fellow minorities. Frankie, uh, <laughs> that's about it. Her, probably. Can't see behind the trees. <laughs> no, but I have a message for my fellow minorities. Stop. <laughs> We're trying to win a war here, and it's a lot easier when they take themselves out. <laughs> I think everybody heard that really sad story about those two women from small town Kansas that got murdered. I don't think murder is funny. I think attempted murder is hilarious though. Because there was a real plan on the table for four hillbillies to kill one of those women by dropping an anvil on her. An anvil! <laughs> Which is 2024, that's a perfectly fine way to kill somebody. If you're Wiley Coyote and write Acme on the side of that bitch. They found a much more efficient way to kill those women and stuff, her in a, stuff them in a freezer. I'll leave that out next time. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm getting real fired up over cartoons. <laughs> Here's the thing. You realize how many balloons you have to get to lift your house off the ground? 31 million. These aren't jokes, they're research projects. <laughs> like, you fell asleep in the house. That's what people do when they start their car in their garage. And everybody's like, ah, oh, whimsical Pixar film! No, that's not what, all right. I gotta delete Disney Plus. I gotta. <laughs> I'm glad there's not a bass guitar back here. Uh, <laughs> little known comedy history, the first time Jerry Seinfeld ever did comedy was right here, and there was a bass guitar here. That's where he got the idea for the theme song. Bum, bum, bum. Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld's real name, first name, Jerome. <laughs> you wanna laugh, laugh. He's a Jewish guy with a black name, it's hilarious. <laughs> That's the most blackish, most Jewishest name I've ever heard since Aubrey Drake Graham. <laughs> Here's my problem with Drake. You can't be a Jewish dude from Canada and the greatest rapper of all time. It just doesn't work. Now if you're a dark-skinned dude from Compton, all right. <laughs> Get down with that. You guys like dogs? I fucking hate dogs. <laughs> I hate dogs, I hate your dog too. Uh, <laughs> no, but I don't think a lot of black people like dogs. There he is. Do we, do we like dogs? Yes. Damn it, <laughs> don't fuck up my joke. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something here. <laughs> no. Thank you, thank you. Everybody just forget the yes. <laughs> no, nah, but I hate dogs. I hate dogs, I think a lot of black people do. You've seen the videos. We also don't like fire hydrants, white hoodies. I'll keep going until you laugh. Ronald Reagan. Crack, no, we love crack, I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, but I think I'm gonna try and become a dog person. I wanna get outside of my comfort zone. It's 2024, I'm asking how trans girls are getting dogs. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get a pug, a little fucked up nose and shit. Get his matching t-shirts. You wanna know what those t-shirts will say? Hashtag I can't breathe. All right, I'm Felix Johnson. See you later. Felix Johnson, everybody. Woo! All right. We got one more person in this division until we figure out who is 2024's girlfriend, which I'm telling you, all these guys want this title. <laughs> 
Uh, everybody, I'm super excited to bring this next comedian up. He is a Wichita boy, and not only that, he's a little sweet on your boy right here. Everybody, give a nice round of applause for JP. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Travis Kangle, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna fuck him tonight. Really, the reason I came here today is to do exactly that. I don't give a fuck what you people think of me or how I do up here tonight, as long as I get a fuck Travis Cagle. Uh, speaking of people fucking other people, Shane, where's Shane? It's not your girlfriends that are the problem, buddy. It's that you're dating girls. I didn't want to be the one to tell you, buddy, but uh, your breath smells like dick. Uh, maybe, maybe you have better chances with guys, I don't know. I haven't had very much luck lately, but that's because I'm 47 years old, which I just discovered today. I thought I was 48 because I'm bad at math and I smoke a lot of pot. But uh, anybody here fans of the Laughing on the Sidelines podcast? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So we recorded earlier today and literally found out I fucking shaved a year off my life. So that's pretty fucking cool, I have to say. That's awesome. Uh, I think I have enough people here tonight that things are going to go well for me, so sorry, Peter Bedgood, whatever train you hopped on to get here, I hope it's going back the other way. Uh, thank you. Uh, also, a big shout out to Felix's pants for making it through his set. Uh, it, was, it was fucking touch and go there for a minute. Uh, I don't know what was more embarrassing, how tight they were or the fact that I still couldn't see his dick. And I looked, I looked, I fucking looked, and, and I mean, not bragging, just saying. Uh, if worse comes to worse and I don't think I'm gonna win, I will pull my dick out. Let's everybody just, let's practice. Ladies and gentlemen, JP stick! Trust me, it's not that impressive. I haven't had a boyfriend for five years. And uh, the last one that I had, I think I know where I fucked up. Uh, I had his parents come to a show and I have a joke about his dad that I had never told in front of his dad, but I did. And uh, it goes something like this. You know, I'm single gay white male in my early thirties who's been doing that intro since it was relevant. Uh, I'm 47 now, but also I have a boyfriend. He's sweet. He's cute, he's half my age. Which is awesome until you go to meet his parents. And I was like, fuck man, I have no idea what I'm gonna say to these people. And so I did what I normally do when I don't know what I'm gonna say. I smoked a bunch of pot. And I just spoke from the heart. And I said, hi, my name's JP. It's nice to meet you. Uh, I just wanna thank you for giving your son those daddy issues. <laughs> and I shook his dad's hand and I said that to his face. And a week later, we broke up. I think his dad had something to do with it. So, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, let's see, Derek Alders was up here. He's also on the, uh, the podcast. He's an OG, he was one of the starters. Uh, I love Derek, but Derek's a fucking liar. Derek says he's looking for a house in the range of $38,000, but him and his wife just bought brand new matching Lexi. That's plural for Lexus. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was more than $38,000. Uh, so you come up here and you do the right material and shit like that, but dude, you can't be up here fucking lying, dude. That's not cool. Derek has more sports memorabilia in his basement than $38,000. And I'm gonna give you his address right now. Four, three, seven. No, I would never do that. I would never do that in front of all these people, but DM me after the show and uh, I'll let you know where he lives. Uh, sorry, Derek. I didn't, I didn't wanna say it, man. But uh, yeah, so this is the first time I've been on stage in probably a year. I was on stage for uh, the closing of the Looney Bin. I know, sad, right? But have you seen the people that have come up here tonight? Think of all the fucking trauma they've saved you guys. Uh, whoever put this together, thank you, CSB. Thanks for hosting. 
Uh, I've always dreamed of doing a fucking six o'clock comedy show on a Sunday. Uh, I fucking made it. I knew. I knew one day if I if I worked hard enough, and tried hard enough, I'd make it. And to do it in front of all you people is fucking a blessing, a goddamn blessing. I'm uh, about out of time, and I don't know what I'm gonna say for my next five minutes, but I cannot wait to get that piece of paper. Thank you guys for being here. JP, everybody, JP. All right, real quick, let, let me get all my girlfriends up here. Peter, Felix. March it on up. All right. Okay, guys. You know the drill. Let's figure this shit out real quick. We're going to start in order. Let's hear it for Peter Bedgood. Okay. Okay. What about Felix Johnson? I mean, they respect you. All right, hey, what, what about JP? <laughs> Thank, thankfully, thankfully, Peter is a good enough friend that he didn't make me say something really, really mean to his face. So let's give it up for JP. He is your girlfriend. Come here, get up here. Take, take, take a picture. Great, great, here we go. Go away, thank you. You did so good, you did so good. Guys, we are in our last three-way match of the night, all right? Right now, we are getting ready to do the Bling Blau. Now, who likes Bling Blau? Who likes that blueberry beer? Two people, that's cool, it's just a fun thing to say. We don't have to drink it, it's okay. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm excited to get this next dude up here. He has been fucking itching to get up here, and I'm so glad we finally got him. Put your hands together for Eric Zayas. Yo, yo. How y'all doing? Enjoying the show so far? Shout out, Travis. I gotta hurry the fuck up. I got my kid in the car, and it's a hot day. I gotta... The window's cracked a little bit. She likes to fucking sneak over. No, I... Uh... I do, I actually have a kid. I love her. Um, I fucking make really bad decisions sometimes and I got her name tattooed on my neck. And at first glance, it's like, oh, what are you talking about? Her name's Analia. Let me, let me spell it out for you. It's A-N-A-L-I-A. -A -A. And I feel, if I wear a collared shirt, I got, I got a king's crown right on top of it. I'm walking around the anal king. I'm... <laughs> I get a lot of free drinks at XY though, so I'm really not that upset. I... A lot of the fellas like to high five me. I am single, believe it or not. I know, I know. This is where you guys go, aw, dickheads. Aw, oh, thanks. I'll fucking cry. I don't even, but I am. I am single, I am single. I'm on, I'm on the dating apps. I'm on Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, Christian Mingle, Black People Meet, Farmers Only. I'm fucking struggling. It's, it's, it's hard, Facebook dating. It's, it's a tough get out here. But no man, and sometimes you, know, you match with somebody and it's like 2 a.m. after the bars and the alcohol's talking to your head, the other head, and like the other night, I had a young lady. She hit me up right away. Eric, what are you doing tonight? I want to come over. I was like, damn, bitch. All right. Uh, yeah, come over. She's like, I'm like 20 minutes away. Uh, send me your address. I was like, here's my address. Uh, my phone's about to die, but just knock on the door. Cool. 20 minutes go by, and I hear a giant. <laughs> ah. That sounded a little masculine. <laughs> 
I gave her the benefit of the doubt. She, I know, I live around the corner. She drove from Derby. Fuck it, you know? I opened the door and just, whoof. I see a bitch that's 6'12", 250. My first thought, I'm gonna have sex with Shaq. But I took it to the rim that night. I, that, that's a nasty eating joke. You'll get it later. You'll get it, you'll get it on your drive home. Like, oh, he's disgusting. Ew. <laughs> Kids are eating ass now, huh? That's nasty. Yeah. I am. I'm 26. <sighs> I look all of 26. I look like I drove with my head out the window. I look weathered. I, yeah. Hey, relax. But like, because I'm on the dating apps, I match with certain girls that I just don't fit the description. Like their bio is like, you have to be six feet tall. Mm. I'm missing a couple inches there. Long hair is a must. Might've lost that on that one. Giant dick. Got me, damn. <laughs> Strike three, lady. I'm out on that one. But no, I did. I actually found, I found a girl this, uh, this summer. She invited me to a lot of barbecues. Uh, the first one she invited me to is when I met her mom and dad, her grandpas, her uncles, her cousins, brothers. And uh, as I walked up to her dad, I went to shake his hand. Hello, my name is Eric Zayas. And he's like, Zayas? That sounds a little foreign. Zayas is Mexican. I am Mexican. Side, side note, they got a Zayas and Aguilar and an Uncle Bam in the same bracket. <laughs> so weird. Anyways, but yeah, I'm full Mexican. So when I met him, I said, my name is Eric Zayash. He's like, that's a little foreign. And I was like, ah, I don't know what that means. But as I got to talk to them, I realized like, they don't really like me. But as I got further into the garage, I started seeing certain memorabilia on the walls. And the further I got, I saw a giant Trump 2024 flag. Now, the elephant in the room, Mexicans, Trump, there's a giant border between us. Um, but then I started thinking, how do I earn his respect? How do I earn a Trump supporter's respect? I grabbed his daughter by the pussy, and it was smooth sailing from there. I got invited to every single cookout. They're not all winners. They're not all winners. There's been a lot of dick talk tonight. I'll add on to that. Uh, I do, man. Fellas, fellas, uh, I see a couple. You, he sends pictures of his wiener to you? No? Picture wiener? No? I do. Uh, I... You got to risk it for the biscuit, you know? I, I, listen, I travel for comedy sometimes, and I was seeing this lady, lady, and she was like, Eric, I'm feeling a certain type of way. Send me a picture of that thing. And I was like, whoa. But I did. I did it. I'm disgusting. I know. I went to the bathroom, took it. Didn't, didn't feel good about it, but I sent it anyways. Later that night, I went over to her house, and as I was getting ready for bed, I see her phone lighting up, and it's buzzing, and it's notification after notification after notification. And again, I'm Mexican, and I went right, grabbed it. That's mine. And I started looking through it. This is when I realized girls have a group chat. <laughs> and I'm really insecure. <laughs> but I grabbed it and I was like, fuck it, let's see what's going on in this group chat. And I realized they're raiding their boyfriend's dicks. And these bitches are harsh. <laughs> I, I'm looking through, I'm looking through and I'm looking at them and I'm like, that's a solid dick. That's eight out of 10 at least. Great head. And then I and then I get to mine and I'm thinking, it's not bad. It's clean shaved. Promo code Eric Manscaped. Um, and it has a hood. Give me style points for that one. I said I was Mexican. And so then I, you know I I get to mine and I'm looking at it, and the first message back after my dick pic is, girl, as long as you're happy. And I said <laughs> My name's Eric Zayas, thank you. Oh, let, let Eric hear real quick. Woo. Woo. We got 
got two more people in this first round. Now, coming up to the stage, I'm, uh, I'm fucking excited about this. This dude kills every single chance he gets, so please, make your relative feel welcome. Let's hear it for Uncle Bam. What's going on, Central Brewery? We got to do some day jokes and shit. This is unnecessary. Uh, they, they do got all the Latinos on one bracket. I think we competing for a green card after this. <laughs> some bullshit. It's kind of a little racist. That's why I don't like cutting my own yard, because every time I do it, it's somebody asking me how much I be charging to do yards. I be like, I don't even want to do this, motherfucker. Yeah, I know everybody out here got kids because that's come with the water when you move here. Like, I love my kids because I have to, but I don't like them as people. <laughs> like, this new generation, different than a motherfucker. Like, how many kids is wearing hoodies still right now? And my, my kids are the only ones walking around smelling like a Spangles onion burger? This is some <laughs> bullshit. And that's the females. I was like, you too young to be that musty. That is stupid. These kids smell like a sound effect. They be like, burr, burr. <laughs> I got to remind them every day to wash their ass. I can't stand them. I've been a single father so long, I be stressed out. I be taking candlelit bubble baths and shit. Went up to school to whoop my son, and I had a house coat and bonnet on. All his friends called me daddy, uncle, mom. I be like, fuck you, little motherfucker. Can't stand them. I'm getting old and stuff. I had dreads. Uh, I had to cut them because I was thinning. So I went from black to Mexican off a of haircut. <laughs> well, I'm, I, one thing about the haircut, though, my credit score went up, so that was a plus. <laughs> I didn't know the dreads was holding me back. I had to cut them because she gave me comb over dreads one time because I went to get my hair done, and she was taking my side dreads and flipping them over here. And doing the other way, called it a fishtail. I'm like, nah, bitch, that's a comb over. I know what that is. <laughs> I mean, cut these. This is unnecessary. Yeah, I'm new to being Mexican, though. I ain't, I ain't used to it. I grew up in the projects of Michigan, so they wasn't that far north when I was growing up. <laughs> so, like, I just learned how to eat tamales a couple weeks ago. Like, I, I thought she was selling a deal on stale burritos. <laughs> If I got it, I'm like, ooh, this is a deal. I just bit into it. I'm like, God damn, this is a tough-ass burrito. <laughs> I just started pushing it out the tip like an icy. I'm like, it's pretty good when you get to this white meat. It's all right. I saw a real Mexican eat one. He just opened it up. I'm like, bitch, give me instructions next time. I tried to chew through that hard-ass husk. Something that's, like, I just uh, met some of my Latino family. And these people gonna have that, the first thing they say to me is like, yeah, he related to us, he got our forehead. I'm like, who the fuck pass on foreheads? <laughs> like, most people are like, you got my eyes or nose. You're like, you got my forehead. I'm like, it's some bullshit. I'm... And then all the women in the family had cotton candy hair. You can see through their scalp. I'm like, yeah, I'm screwed. <laughs> I've been trying to save this little hair. I've been buying keeps and shit. All they did was keep taking money out of my account. I had to stop doing that shit. I couldn't afford it no more. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Uh, I just found out some useless information I want to pass on to y'all. Uh, did y'all know the little meat on y'all elbow is called a weenus? That tickled me for like three weeks. I've been, I'm still, I've just been telling random kids, I'm like, look, look, look at play with your weenus right there, this little. <laughs> oh. But I ain't gonna hold y'all up because it's a competition and I'm getting hot and I'm starting to feel a little sweat roll down my ribs. I thought something was crawling on me for a little bit. <laughs> I was up here getting up, like, ah, I'm like, ooh, that's me. I'm melting. Like, this heat is disrespectful. This ain't the same sun I grew up with. Like, I've been having to put my deodorant on different and stuff since this new sun came out. I've been having to do this. <laughs> I ain't never had to put deodorant under my titties till now. This is, this is stupid. I know, so there's a lot of funny built dudes out here. I ain't the only one up here funny built. <laughs> Here's some clues if you got some titties. If you in the car and you hit a bump and your chest do that, <laughs> you got titties, motherfucker. 
If you can't wear your Ray Rice doesn't mean white beaters because your nipples fall out the side and you gotta do that all the time. <laughs> Sir, you have breasts. If you can do this. <laughs> you got titties, we both need to do some push-ups, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I'm comedian Uncle Bear, man. Thank y'all. Uncle Bam. Holy shit. Woo. All right, guys. We got one more comedian, and then this first round is over. Now, if you guys remember Eric from a little bit ago, this is his co-host. They have a podcast called Running the Light. Be sure to check that out. Hit it up on Insta, all that stuff. Everybody, please put your hands together for Frankie Miracle. All right, all right, all right, I got five minutes up here. Cut the shit. How are we doing tonight? Don't care. Uh, I'm doing all right. I think I'm going to need to ride home after this. I've been using CBD lotion all day, and uh, I don't want to crash the whip. You know what I'm saying? Any uh, CBD fans in here? It's a lot more white, so I would have expected it to be higher. White people, give yourself a round of applause. Should have did that. Fell for it. Idiot. I'm just kidding, white people are all right. I'm half white, you know? I'm one of you guys, I can relate. I grew up in a trailer park and I hate my family. We're all the same. <laughs> what was I talking about? CBD. Hey, uh, isn't it pretty cool how white people can take shit like that? Like, like, like edibles, you know what I mean? And market them to more white people? Uh, I'll give you guys an explanation so you understand what I'm saying. Like, it didn't used to be that easy to just get edibles, like to get pop brownies, you had to like walk two miles and meet a guy under a bridge in the rain and I didn't know like a code to, to get him. And now you can just get that shit like out of fucking Trader Joe's. And I'll tell you how they did it, white people. They use names, they use words that sound good and sound smart. So that way other white people are like, mm, yes, I'll buy this. They use the word, it's not, you know, it's not a pot brownie no more. This is an infused treat, right? They threw the word infused in there and it fucking did numbers. So I just wanted to give you uh, white people, like, you know, shout out to you guys for just crushing it, right? You guys don't get enough credit, I don't think, for that stealing stuff. I, you guys are the best. You guys are the fucking best. Uh, I think if the apocalypse ever happened, though, to, I would just lock myself in a vape shop, just survive on elf bars for a couple years till it blew over. I just had that thought today. I've been watching a lot of zombie movies. Any zombie fans up here? Cool. <laughs> I'm not good enough. I don't think I'm smart enough to be like in a fucking, in a horror movie setting or like some like apocalypse setting. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'd be high all the time. And like, you know, in movies when they're like trying to be fucking quiet, like I'm bad, I got a lazy eye, can't see good. I'm knocking shit over for sure. Like I'd get caught. I'd be, I would, if I'm like trying to sneak through a room, I'd trip and like knock a chair over. I would just stand there, but you can just come kill me now. Just take me out. I don't belong in horror movies. That's what I'm saying, folks. I, uh, I have been working on some side gigs because comedy's not doing that good. You could probably tell. I've been harvesting data as a side gig, so guys, don't put your phones too close to me. I'm going to snatch some of your personal info for sure and sell it to the Chinese. Speaking of the Chinese, did they make this fucking stage? I'm surprised it held Felix Johnson. I saw it buckling a little bit while he was up here, and I was like, go, 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 fall. I just wanted it. I, I'm not trying to prey on your downfall, Felix. You're just fucking huge. I don't know where you are. Probably hiding somewhere. Now, I do do a lot of side gigs. I actually, I do, a, I set up inflatables on the side. So, like, I do the kids' corner at the Riverfest. So, you know, that fucking guy in a wife beater that's telling your kids, like, fuck it, do a flip. That's me. <laughs> they brought Riverfest back after COVID and I was so fucking excited. I forgot about some of the things that they did, like the little helicopter tours and shit, that little red helicopter be bopping around. I thought that was cool. I mean, not for me personally. I just don't fuck with helicopters because I'm a real Kobe Bryant fan. So <laughs> too soon, who gives a shit? <laughs> I'm about to turn 28 in like four days, right? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, no, you don't care. It's all good. I, I've been getting older, and so I'm like trying to do things to act my age. You know what I mean? Uh, I got a, 
poker table online recently because I was like, gotta have poker nights with the guys, you know, smoke cigars, talk show on our wives, the whole nine. Uh, but so I ordered a poker table, but I ordered it on Wayfair. And uh, instead of a seven by seven poker table, they just delivered a seven year old Chinese boy. And I was upset at first, you know what I mean? But I'm a hustler, CSB, okay? I'm an entrepreneur. So what did I do? I ordered five more poker tables. I got them in my basement making Nike dunks right now. And just to cover my bases, I ordered a little coffee table, a little end table. She's in the kitchen making spring rolls right fucking now, dog. I'm about to get out of here, but uh, if you guys like me, I'm going to have some merch. I don't think I'm going to make it to the finals, so I'm going to say this now. Uh, I'm going to have some merch outside. I'll be at that table. It's just Adderall. It's two for ten. So a lot of whites in here, a lot of whites. I knew I'd appeal to you guys. Uh, I saw some white guys with Jordans walk in. That's how I know there's Coke in here. I used to sell Coke. I can't do that shit. I, can't, I do irresponsible shit with cocaine money. I was getting my produce at Target. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Crazy. I'm not responsible enough to have it. But if anybody has a bump, I'll be at the table later. Anyways, I love you guys. Uh, please help me get a green card. Travis, come get it. Frankie Miracle. Frankie Miracle, everybody. Holy shit. Let me get everybody from Bling Blow up here. Let's get Eric, let's get Uncle Bam, let's get Frankie. Okay. Let's get to business. How do we feel about Eric? That's good, they like you. They like you. This one might be a little close, I don't know. Hey, real quick. Nieces and nephews, how do we feel about Uncle Bam? Yeah. God damn! God damn! <laughs> Shit, I, I think they like you guys. Fuck. Hey, really quick, what about what about the magic man himself? Let's hear it for Frankie Miracle. Wow. Okay, so every, every contest where somebody does this, there's always that cliche moment where somebody's like, I don't know. And I hate saying this, but fuck, I don't know. So hey, let's throw it in reverse. Let's see how we feel. Frankie Miracle. Okay. Uncle Bam. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I get it. That feels good. I get it. Eric Zayas. Uh, all right. This this is tough to do. This is tough to do. Frankie, could you do me a favor? Give me a hug and go away. Thank you. Love you, buddy. Thank you. It's so good. It's so great. All right. Fuck. Okay. If you really like one of these per people more than the other, please make it well known. So, hey, if you are fucking with Eric, let's hear it. Okay. Okay. Now, now, if you came here because you want to see Uncle Bam do five more minutes, let Uncle Bam fucking hear it! Okay, I'm going to say something really quick. This is the second annual Central Stand-Up. This is the second time I've ever done this shit. I'm new, I don't know what to do. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have both of them come in the final round. How about that? Yeah? Five more minutes. 
Five more minutes for fucking free. You guys didn't even pay for that. All right. Hey, well, let's get a picture real quick. Hey, I'll fill out another certificate. All three of us on this bitch. Come here, let me get in the middle like I'm the dad. I adopted both of these boys and I fucking love them with all my heart. Round of applause, clap, come on. Woo! Woo! Okay, you guys can decide who gets that tonight, who gets it tomorrow. Really quick. You guys thought I forgot about you? Hey. Everybody in the crowd, every single one of y'all's, you have been fucking dynamite. Round of applause for yourself real quick. Yes! I love it. But, there can only be one best, and there can only be one worst. So, here's what I'm gonna do. First, we're gonna give out the audience MVP. This is coming with a $10 CSV gift card. Apply that to the tap tonight. What? And you guys are gonna get a couple of greeting cards from Mr. Peter Bedgood. So, the audience MVP, this has been really tough because you guys have been fucking great tonight. Seriously, everybody's been on fire. I've had my eye on one person in particular. I've been watching them throughout this whole night, seeing how they interact, seeing what gets them giggled, seeing what mm, gets them pushed away, seeing what they don't like. The audience MVP is somebody who is sitting very close to a TV. This is a dude who has a black shirt on. This is a guy who has a hat on. He is also wearing sunglasses Everybody, let's give it up for our audience MVP. That dude right the fuck there. Come here. Come here. No, come here. Come here. Give him a round of applause. He's been enjoying the show. He's been laughing. He did not know this was going to happen, and he is embarrassed. Let's make him feel it. Here you go, buddy. You got yourself $10 All from right. CSB. A certificate from Amazon.com. We'll get the card. And you get a free hug all right. from the worst comedian on stage all night. Boom. All right, buddy. Hey, sir, sir, don't forget that. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Boom. Okay, that was the best. Now, really quick, who's feeling shitty? Who, hey, who's having an absolutely terrible time? Who hasn't laughed one time this whole comedy show? Right? If you're feeling confident, you might start to stand up. If you're feeling like this is yours in the bag, like you haven't even smiled once, whew, this could be you. Guys, this is really fun for me because this is somebody who is in the center of the entire room. This is somebody at the epicenter. This is a dude who has a hat on. This is a guy who is wearing a shirt. This is a person who likes 80s metal. Dude in the Metallica, hey, dude in the Metallica shirt, come here, come here. You're the audience LVP. Everybody give him a round of applause. Hey, this was hard for him too, okay? Audience LVP, because he's so much taller than me now that I realize it. Maybe don't be so mean to this guy, okay? Be kind of nice. Maybe he was the MVP, I don't know. But guys, our audience LVP, hold on. You're going away with a gift card for CSB, 10 bucks, free beer and a half. Two gift cards from Peter Bedgood, the loser. <laughs> and my undying respect, thank you, go away. <laughs> Woo! Guys. Okay, here it is. Here it is. This is the thing we've been waiting for. Zach, go ahead and get on deck, buddy. Guys, this is the final round, okay? This is what we've been waiting for all night, and we have an extra person in this shit, too. So we are going to go fast. So, the winner of the Laser Fog, I have to check, the Laser Fog Division, give it up for Zach Amon. Come on! Thank you. All right.
And I'll talk about myself a little bit more. I'm German, Italian, and Japanese, that's right. I'm the Axis powers of World War II. <laughs> Combined in front of you wearing a fanny pack. I'm doing my ancestors justice, right? But I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, so all that translated to was, hey, Asian kid, like, that's it. Like, I got picked on constantly. Kids would come up to me all the time and be like, hey, Zach, how's Hiroshima? Oh, it's gone! That's fine, I can stand up for myself. I'd be like, hey guys, how's Pearl Harbor? Oh, it's gone! I got the shit kicked out of me for that joke, dude. But you gotta stand up for yourself, you gotta be tough, you know? Girls would come up to me all the time and be like, hey Zach, teach us kung fu, then do our nails. I'm like, that's not cool, dude. I can't do kung fu. Like, sweep kicks, no, acrylics less. Yes, ladies, I got you all day, you know? But the thing that bothered me the most, the thing that I hated, was that they always said I had squinty eyes. And I hated that, because I don't think I have squinty eyes, personally. But they would always come up to me and be like, hey, Zach, why don't you open your eyes when you talk to us, huh? You know? But I could go back at them, and I'd be like, hey, Kyle, you gonna shoot up a school today? <laughs> yeah. I got beat up a lot for that, but never shot, thankfully. Kyle liked the joke. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my mom is, uh, my mom's Japanese. My mom's interesting. My mom was born in Japan, but grew up her whole life in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My mom is what I like to call a white trash Asian. Like, it's the best way to describe it. My mom's like if Kid Rock and Lucy Liu had a baby. <laughs> like, you know, or for a more updated reference, Post Malone and Aquafina. Like, just, it's a lot of smart with a lot of garbage, you know? <laughs> like, my mom loves to get wrecked on Coors Light and sit in her pool all day while wearing a cowboy hat. And I'm like, what are you doing? You've never seen a horse, you know? And she's like, I'm just trying to be Brett Michaels. And I'm like, you're so old. That's such an old person's reference, you know? Any Brett Michaels fans? <laughs> Oldies, they're the old people, everybody. But she can, sp <laughs> she's so funny. Like, she is smart. Like, my mom graduated college, did all that. But the only piece of advice I ever remember my mom teaching me was, Zach, don't shave all your pubes because women don't like bouncing on sandpaper. And I was like, I'm six, what are pubes? <laughs> no idea. But as I've gotten older, she's right. It's solid advice. I keep it fluffy. I keep it down there, you know? Got to. She can speak uh, fluent Japanese. I've seen her do it. She talks to her mom in Japanese. She'll talk to our relatives in Japanese. She would yell at my brother and I in Japanese. But God forbid she hears anybody speak Spanish. And she's like, go back to your country. This is America. MAGA, MAGA. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, mom, get back in the pool. Those are your neighbors. They're from, they're from Wichita, that's crazy. My grandma's Japanese, my grandma's full on Japanese, like can't say her L's Japanese, you know what I'm talking about. And the thing growing up my entire life is that she wanted to teach me how to be like financially secure, financially independent. Every year for my birthday or for Christmas, I get a, Christmas, like a card with money in it and then a novel on what I should do with this money and how I should use it to prepare for my future. And I'm like, Grandma, I'm 12. I don't know who Roth Ira is. Like, I thought that was a singer. Like, I thought a 401k was a TV. I was like, cool, I'm getting a TV. But as I've gotten older, I've been doing the same thing for her. Every year for her birthday or for Christmas, I get her a card with a nursing home pamphlet on the inside. And I'm like, you gotta start preparing for your future, Grandma. Because <laughs> I did not heed your financial advice. You're going away. I'm doing comedy in Wichita, all right? <laughs> You're going away. Um, I like weed. I don't know if you guys can tell. In Oklahoma, we have uh, medical marijuana. I have my medical card. I'm sick. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm sick. <laughs> I suffer what they call a, a chronic illness. Hello. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the other day I realized I probably smoked a little too much weed because anytime I get any amount of cash, I know exactly how much weed I can buy with that cash. I was helping my dad with some yard work the other day. He paid me 50 bucks. I was like, sweet, that's a quarter. And he was like, that's 50 bucks, dumbass. That's not a quarter. And I was like, I'll see you at church, dad. Have a good day. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about, you know? I got paid for a comedy gig the other day. And I was like, sweet, I get two pre-rolls. That's awesome. That's pretty sweet. People who laugh hard at that understand pre-rolls, not expensive. Not at all. You can get them for a penny in some places. Yeah, comedy pays well. Pays really well. But... The moment it really hit me was I saw my landlord the other day. My landlord was like, hey, do you have rent? I was like, rent? You mean three ounces, six edibles, 12 dabs, and 14 joints? <laughs> no. I am going to be late this month, but I'm going to Wichita. Thank you guys so much. My name is Zach Amon. Keep it going for your host. Woo, Zach Amon. All right. 
Now, we have the winner of the Wizard of Hops division. And this might be one to watch because Wizards of Hop took it last year. So everybody, please, hands together for Shauna Blake. Okay, I'm so jazzed that it's summer. My favorite pastime in the summer is floating on the river. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah I love it, okay. Last month, I was floating on the Illinois River. This group of guys floats past me and my friends, and one of them yells out, Hey, show us your tits! And I was like, how dare you? I am a lady, but I'm not a prude. So I did one. It was a scoop and pull situation. I sort of presented it. Like Antiques Roadshow. The guy responded with, damn, that's the best titty I've seen all year. I was like, oh, well, aren't I the belle of the ball? So what I'm saying, ladies, is there are good men out there who will appreciate you for what you have to offer. At least I hope there are. I'm going through a breakup. My friends are really trying to help me. They're saying things like, this too shall pass, and it's better to have loved and lost, and let's set his house on fire. I was like, guys, he doesn't have a house. <laughs> this economy, don't be crazy. They're like, oh, let's set his car on fire. And I was like, he doesn't have a car either. And they were like, oh, let's get him fired from his job. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> we're 0 for 3. <laughs> what I learned from that experience is you should always date people who have their shit together. That way, when you break up, you can light that shit on fire. A lot of happy couples here today, that's fine. <laughs> My friends are really concerned about me, you know, they're saying things like, be careful, don't rebound, don't rebound. I was like, rebounds win championships. <laughs> I don't know why they're trying to stifle me, you know? But I will say, I don't know what I'm looking for out here now that I'm single. I know that it's different than what my male single friends are looking for. I know that, I hear them talk to each other. Let me start by saying men love to call women crazy who are not crazy. But some women are crazy. And men love those women. I knew these two did. This, this, with these shirts. I know you guys do. Okay, I know it. My friends talk to each other. One of my friends told his guy friend the other day, bro, this chick came over to my house the other night. She saw the urn that's on my mantle that has my mother's ashes in it. She walked over, she knocked it to the ground, it scattered into a million pieces. She bent over, she started scooping up the ashes, put them on her face like a face mask, turned around and said, come give mama a kiss. And the other guy responded with, hell yeah, bro. I was like, we look for different things in partners. <laughs> I do love the idea, though, of the next guy that dates me turning to his friends and being like, bro, she's crazy, and that guy's like, hell yeah, and he's got to be like, no. <laughs> it's a different kind. <laughs> like, yeah, she wants to role play in the bedroom, but she wants to be Tom Hanks in Wilson's movie Castaway. <laughs> she just curls up in a ball and refuses to respond. Like, that's not, it's not the right kind of crazy. That's why I'm not having crazy sex. I hear people are having it. I was talking to a guy recently who told me that he was gonna blow my back out. I was like, okay, Chad. <laughs> like, are you? But you guys, I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I had to Google it. Turns out my back, fully intact. <laughs> I've had my back blown on. Which I thought was like a cool tantric sex move. He was having an asthma attack. <laughs> it's the kind of men that I'm into, <laughs> historically speaking, are not like blow your back out, guys. It's summer, and so I'm really like into like country. Like I like a cowboy or like a ranch hand, you know? I keep manifesting universe, send me a ranch hand. They keep sending me men with ranch on their hands. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking for a guy who has that sauce, not spills it, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know though, that's the kind of men I'm into. I was hanging out with a hot boy recently, like a super traditionally attractive man, and, uh, but he was one of those hot guys that like knew he was hot, 
You know the ones I'm talking about. I was like, calm down. You're one disfiguring car accident away <laughs> from being a regular guy, Danny. <laughs> Get over yourself, okay? But I will say the last guy that I dated told me that he didn't want to do me from behind because it felt too much like manual labor. <laughs> you guys, I have a blue collar ass and he was more of a white collar fuck. <laughs> you know, like, didn't like to get too dirty, had soft hands, covered in ranch. Um, real pencil pusher. Uh, and whenever things went poorly, he would just blame whoever was underneath him. You know? Yeah, you guys, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, he was constantly worried that a robot was gonna take his job. <laughs> but it's gonna be an immigrant. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> You guys, I love doing stand-up comedy. It's my very favorite thing in this world. Recently, after a show, I went with a very drunk comedian friend of mine to a Whataburger after the show, and like a pack of youths walked in, like a dozen high school boys. And my friend was so drunk that he engaged with them. Do you guys want to know who wins a rap battle between a drunk comedian and a 17-year-old TikTok star? That's right, the answer is nobody wins. <laughs> it was a nightmare, start to finish. Then to make matters worse, one of these boys, he like sidles up to me and he's like, hey, do you think that uh, when I turn 18, me and you? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The age of consent in Oklahoma is 16. I don't know what you're waiting on. <laughs> You guys, I did not bang a child in a Whataburger, I feel like. We went to my house, I'm an adult woman. I'm Shauna Blake, thank you guys so much for letting me hang out again. Please bring Travis back up here. He's here, he's here. <laughs> Woo, Shauna Blake, everybody. Woo. All right, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Next, we have our 20, 24 girlfriend winner. Hey, really quick. We're gonna pass this tip jar around during the next set. If you guys wanna give some money for some of the people who came out of town, some of the people who shared some embarrassing things, hey, that's great. If not, who cares? Fuck them, they suck, right? Yeah. Guys, I'm excited for this next dude. He is your 2024 Girlfriend Division winner. Let's hear a round of applause for JP. I don't want to mess up your mic. I don't want to mess up your mic. All right. Thank you, Travis, one more time. My God. Oh, I am going to get a hold of that later. His wife just left. She does not like me. She told me so right before she left and told me to leave my hands off of him. But that's not going to happen. So uh, here I am, probably for the first time on stage in a year at least, maybe longer. I wasn't prepared for the first five minutes, so now I gotta do another five. But I will tell you, I did prepare for this five because I went out to the car and got high first. And that's what it's all about, really. Uh, especially marijuana, it's starting to become a lot more popular. A lot of older people are taking gummies and shit like that. And I think that's where we lost Joe Biden. That dude, that is the happiest motherfucker I have ever seen in my life. No clue what's going on, but that son of a bitch is smiling always, no matter what. He can be getting destroyed in a debate. He could fall off the fucking bicycle. It doesn't matter, he gets up and he's a happy son of a bitch. He is definitely taking gummies. Which makes sense because the economy fucking sucks and everything just keeps going up and up in price. It's because he's lazy. He's been doing gummies, he doesn't give a fuck. He's got bigger fish to fry, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that said, I'm gay, obviously I'm not a Trump fan, but let me just say this, Did any, everybody watched him get shot, right? When that lesbian didn't move, not even a fucking finger to help that dude. All these guys are rushing around him trying to keep him down and that motherfucker does this. He gets up and he gives us the fist. 
And in that very fucking moment, I knew I was voting for Trump. I'm not proud of it, and I may be the only gay person in the world that's voting for that son of a bitch, but God damn it. You show me some moxie like that, and I, I'm fucking in. Not to mention the candidate he's running against as a woman. Not a fan. And look, I don't mean that for every girl that's here. Some of you are really pretty. Some of you are not. And that's okay too. And that's okay too because not everybody is pretty. And that's why I'm equal opportunity. Sir, I know you're gonna find this surprising, but I would suck your dick. I'm not particular. No, I'm not gonna come up and ask you. You're not, you know what I mean? If I'm gonna ask somebody, it's gonna be this kid that won that award earlier. Uh, now that son of a, that's a good looking son of a bitch right there. I mean, no, no offense. No, I mean, I think you're plenty fine, but you see it, right? Okay. All right. Uh, that guy also happens to be my niece's boyfriend, by the way. <laughs> so uh, I'm just saying there might be a chance. That's all I'm saying. It feels weird to have this mic in my hand because there's no cord. Uh, the last time I worked without a cordless mic, I swallowed it and we had to cancel the whole fucking show. So I'm really trying to keep both hands on it. And, and not do that again, uh, it's not good. Um, I'm getting older and uh, I hate that, that's fucking bullshit. Uh, my ears are starting to get wrinkly. Does that happen to you guys, anybody else? No, I'm the only one. They're wrinkled right there. And somebody at work pointed out to me yesterday like a really nice person, so go fuck yourself, Bree. Nobody likes you anyway. I've been trying to fire you for a month. But, uh, they're all really a lot younger than I am at work, and uh, we were talking about Vin Diesel. We were talking about Vin Diesel the other day, and they had no idea who this dude is. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! You don't know who Vin Diesel is? Like you've seen the Fast and the Furious movies, right? And like, yeah. I said, well, he's the one that didn't wrap his car around a tree. So that was pretty fucking. They knew right away who he was then, so that was pretty fucking cool. Uh, yeah. Man, this is gonna be a tough one to get through, but I followed the tradition of Derek Alders. Derek is a two-time winner, two back-to-back -back winner of, well, not back-to-back, -back, but still double winner of Wichita's Funniest Person. Derek, the guy that didn't get through the first round. <laughs> but the reason he won those other ones is because he's a funny son of a bitch, but he brought everybody, and I did too. I brought everybody I know tonight. And I appreciate you guys. Yeah, see what I mean? I didn't even have to take my dick out normally. I gotta take my dick out to get that kind of applause, but it's nice to know. And uh, it's been a dream being up here in front of you. It's nice to be doing this again. If this doesn't work out, I'm break dancing in the Olympics next year. So vote for me. Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. Round of applause for Ray Gun. Ray Gun, Ray Gun, Ray Gun, Ray Gun, Ray Gun, Ray Gun, Okay, guys, we're getting close. We're getting close. We got two more. But, hey, here's the deal. Because you guys loved the last two comedians so fucking much, we got to let both of them go. But representing the Bling Blau division first is going to be my man, Eric Zayas. Come here, Eric. Yo, I'm back. I'm back. I talked earlier about I'm single. I've actually had a really bad year. I've had the worst year. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. Go, 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 keep it going. I'm used to this. I'm used to this. Uh, not, not only, I mean, it was a tough, a great year, tough year, uh, but I also, um, I got broken up with, found out she was cheating on me, got another guy's chlamydia, but Dallas made it to the playoffs. So I'm not, it wasn't all that bad. It wasn't all that bad. And then they lost really bad. And that Bernie feeling kind of came back a little bit. Uh, you guys are disgusting. Who laughed? We got to go see a clinic later. You guys are disgusting. It's an STD joke. I don't know if you got that. We got chlamydia. That's what I'm trying to, no? All right. I've been hitting the dating scene, as I said earlier. I, uh, 
I didn't realize like some ladies have been evolving lately. Uh, astrology is really big now. Any astrology ladies out here? Yo, fuck them. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't understand how the moon and the stars line up and makes you how, be a cunt that day. I don't get it. I just don't get it. But I met a girl and she's like, Eric, what's your sign? And I said, I'm an Aquarius. And she's like, oh my God, that means you're super faithful. So I cheated on her, bitch. You're reading the wrong stars. That's what you're doing. I, no? All right. Like I said, I got broken up with. Uh, I, don't re I didn't realize who I had a baby with, with my ex. I always thought she was super sweet until we broke up. And I realized how big of a dickhead she is. And it is, it is even with me. It's with our daughter. She's, uh, she's in kindergarten now. She's going through the whole school system. It was picture day, so I went, took our daughter, and I took a picture of the whole class, and I sent it to her. And she was like, oh, gross, cut out the uglies on the, on the left. I was like, hey, bitch, you're in a group chat with the other parents. Uh, <laughs> yikes, huh? The little Carly's going to have an insecurity problem for the rest of her life. No, and Annalia's mom thinks she's fucking ugly. Uh, I'm Mexican, so traditionally, I start, you know, seeing Mexican ladies. That's cool. I've been, I date a lot of white girls, you know? Bigger boobs, flatter asses, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never realized, though, like, my family and my friends were always like, Eric, you got to start dating Mexicans. They're su they're, they'll cook for you. They'll clean for you. Eric, they're spicy. Eric, they're spicy. And I was like, what does that mean? It means they're dickheads. They're dick that spicy means they're dickheads. And it just, because they're super sweet. They'll cook for you. They'll do anything. And then you leave the toilet seat up. And then all of a sudden, you're a fat retard who just can't get his fucking life together. And I got to get a real job and a 401k and pay child support. I'm gonna pass around a tip jar that goes to child support. <laughs> My kid is gonna get uh, baptized here soon. And we're struggling because I was uh, raised Catholic. Oh. Ah. But my ex is wow, something else, whatever Asians are, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> But no, so we started arguing, like, what, how, how do we want to baptize her? And I realized, like, there's so many religions, but it's all kind of like a different flavor of Jesus Christ. There's, like, Baptist, but, like, Southern Baptist. And I realized, like, like they're the same thing, but just a little racist. <laughs> I told her, I was like, well, I'm Catholic. Why don't we just go with Catholic? And she's like, Eric, you know the controversy. They touch kids. They touch boys, and we have a little girl, so we're fine. We're... <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Speaking of touching, um, I do travel pretty often. I grew up in a small town. Um, so when I travel, I went to Oklahoma City not too long ago, and they got legal weed. I don't know if you guys are into that. So I was, um, I was thinking about moving. I love Oklahoma City, and I was uh, talking to a couple doctors. Hey, doc, what do I have to do to get my medicinal license? And he pulled out a skeleton. And he's like, just point where it hurts, and I got you, fam. Where I come from. You see a doctor and they pull out a skeleton. It's not a point where it hurts. It's usually a point where he touched you. And that's... <laughs> My name's Eric Zeiss. Thank you. Eric Zeiss, everybody. Woo! Woo! Okay, this is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for, guys. We are down to the last comment. So, hey, whatever energy you got left, Let's get it out here right now. Everybody, this is your fucking uncle, so treat him like family. Uncle Bam. Let me get this quick. Uh, my mom, she just beat cancer, but she got one leg, so we'd be sitting around watching a lot of horror movies and zombie shit. And, uh, you know, they got zombie beavers, cheerleaders, and all that. So I was thinking, like, what if JP like became a zombie? Like what? Like what if there was gay zombies? Could you see that? Like his growl would be different and shit. It'd be like girl. 
<laughs> his walk could be different. He'd be like, girl, run. <laughs> if you get bit by a gay zombie, do you become a gay zombie? That's how that shit spread. I got to thinking, like, well, if my mama got bit by a gay zombie, she wouldn't even be able to go her right. She'd be like, go her fire, and just bust her shit. Because she got one leg, yep. Yeah. How many of y'all miss that old COVID? I miss that old COVID. This new COVID don't get no respect. <laughs> like, you can call your job right now and be like, I got COVID. They'd be like, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Put on the mask. I was like, bitch, I can't smell the taste. They were like, we don't need neither one of them. Bring your bitch ass to work. <laughs> oh, I miss that old COVID. I'd be off until I could prove I was healthy. This is some bullshit. I, I miss that old COVID because you ain't have to share your weed and shit. That was great. Didn't nobody smoke with you when you, COVID was out. I smoked with somebody the other day. They had a speech impediment. This motherfucker stuttered when he hit my weed. He said, <laughs> I said, if you don't pass my blood back, motherfucker, it is pop, pop, pass. Just hit my shit six times. I need five dollars. That is, you gotta put in on this. I don't even know how you did that. Some bullshit. Then they had the seafood broils and shit when Kobe came out. My kids talking about they want to go get a seafood boil. Like, hell no, you gonna get these fish sticks like I was raised. The fuck I look like feeding you lobster tail. You better get this frozen fish sticks. That's what you getting. I hate you little motherfuckers. I treat my kids like I was treated a slave. Like I got a flat screen on the old TV and I'd be asking them to come change my apps and shit till I find something to watch. They're like, no, I'll keep flipping. I'm gonna tell you when to stop. I got a bowl of plastic grapes in my living room that I'll be teaching them how to stick to their tongue and shit. I got wood floors, but I, fl I got plastic mats running through my house, so I flip them over in the morning before they go to school, fuck they day up. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I love harassing my kids. Oh shit, that old COVID, like uh, that COVID was giving out, like now, like everything expensive now. When that old COVID was out, we was getting some money. Like now the grocery store need to go to the grocery store. It's, they ain't never got everything. This is some bullshit. Like, uh, they was giving out so much money during COVID, like, I was able to get my teeth fixed. But I used to be missing a tooth in the front. I used to call it my special button holder. I, I tell girls, I put their clit in there, act like a loose piece of meat. Be like, <laughs> that, that was my go getter. I, but, COVID, I got so much money, I was gonna get my teeth fixed, but then I was gonna make them permanent till y'all ladies cheated and came out with that rose. How I many y'all ladies got a rose out here? How y'all gonna be, yeah. Some honesty, that's what I'm talking about. Let y'all lying like a motherfucker. If y'all know what a rose is, it's a little toy, it look like a rose you can get on Amazon, about $40. It hum and suck at the same time. He's like, mwah, 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 mwah. I was like, shit, I ain't about to lose my girl to no toy. So I got my teeth to where I can take them out. So I be giving my girl options. She be like, you want the teeth in or out? I be gumming the shit out the pussy. I am the rose. She just tapped my head. I changed my set and be like, mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> You ever ate so much pussy till you burp? That's pussy in the jazz. You gotta keep sucking through that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, I don't know how much time I got. I know we gotta close this shit up. Uh, but I'm gonna let the men know something about the women they might not have knew. I'm gonna let the women know something about the men. And you know, I'm gonna ruin y'all childhood. That's what I'm about to do. Uh, fellas, did you know when women take baths, sometimes they fart in the tub and it rolls up to their pussy and they fart again? and they never sound the same. They'd be like, blue, 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 blue. I was like, you added to that. That, was, that, was, that wasn't the original right there. Ladies, when we're trying to get your attention and we're making our dick jump on you and it's hitting your chest, your thigh, your forehead or wherever, our booty holes is jumping at the same time. That's why you only get like five jumps. We're like, look, we ain't gonna be over here twerking. You feel this meat on you. All right, I remember listening to this rap album and they was like, 
If you grew up and your grandma had plastic on her couches, that's because she was a squirter. That's why it was always that little foggy, watery bubble on there. So y'all just fucked y'all childhood up, man. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me, man. I'm Uncle Pam. Thank y'all. Come up here. Let's hear a round of applause for everybody. For everybody. Oh my God. Whew. This has been such a fucking good show, guys. I've enjoyed it so much. Um, really quick, before we hand out this trophy, before we get a little snarious, I got one more award to give out because these things come in bulk. Right here, this is the joke of the night. I don't care if they got past the first round, the second round, whatever. Something stuck with me. Something grabbed me in my belly. I felt it. I've been thinking about it for 30 fucking minutes since now. So everybody, please, a round of applause. The joke of the night is gonna go to Shauna Blake. Get out here. And in case you're wondering, I don't want people to think that's my dad, but I want them to wonder. <laughs> that's what got me. That's what stuck with me. So hey, drop the beer, drop the dog. Okay, okay. Grab this. Hey, okay. look at mom. I love you. <laughs> Joke of the night, guys. Round of applause. Now, let me get all of our finalists back here. Let me get Eric Zayas, let me get JP, Uncle Bam, Shauna Blake is behind me. Zach, get the fuck up here. Bring that glizzy, bring that dog. Whew. Okay, this is where it gets fucking real, guys. This is where you guys need to really decide how you feel about a person. So, in case you didn't know, I am a big fan of Amazon.com. And I, I typed in a Google address and I said, Dental Hygienist Lifetime Achievement Award. And guys, this is where Google sent me, right here. This is what we're playing for, the Central Stand Up Champ. One of these people is gonna get to display this in their room and their mom and dad are gonna say, cool. <laughs> right, this is gonna completely validate somebody on stage and make four other people feel like shit. The, the winner of tonight is going away with a trophy with a hundred dollars cash and a hundred dollar cardboard check worth no monetary value, right? Who, hey, who has ever wanted an oversized cardboard check worth no money? Let me hear it. These, these are my people. Okay, so hey, let's, let's figure out the grading scale. So, really quick, this is like you hardly like the person. This is you don't even, you weren't even listening. This is me performing. Let's hear it, let's hear it from me. Okay, cool, cool. I'm not hurt at all. I feel great. This is fine, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and let's hear, let's hear what you guys think of the best person you've ever seen in your entire life. Let me hear 10, top level. Go all the way, all the way, all the way. Okay, that's what we're reaching for. That's what we're going for. So, let's go ahead and drop this down in order. Everybody, Tulsa Sensation. What do we think about Zach? <laughs> Respect. Respectable. Okay, hey. Hey, let's keep it in Tulsa town. Let's, let's see what this is about. Shauna Blake. Okay, we like her too. We like her too. All right, hey, what about the monkey in the middle? What about, what about that big old orangutan? What about that big dude? Hey, 
<laughs> no. Okay, okay. Hey, I can get why we think we were talking about Uncle Ben. He's a third black. No. I'm, I'm talking about the guy with a long dangly. I'm talking about the goofball that a lot of you know. Let me hear it for that big old homo, JP. <laughs> I get it, you like him, big deal. That's enough. Hey, hey, maybe, maybe linger, linger, okay? Hey, let, let's move it over to Bling Blau. Let's move it over to those two fellas. How do we feel about Eric? <laughs> this is stupid, you guys are supposed to pretend you don't like one person more than the others. It feels fucking even. This is ridiculous. What are we supposed to do? All right, hey. What, what about everybody's family? Let's give it up for Uncle Bam. I don't know. I, mean, I really don't know. Looks like you'll have to order more. Okay, guys, here's what, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hang out. Hey, hold on. We're gonna hang out for another 35 minutes. Everybody's, no, no, we're, hey, we don't have the time. We can't do this again. Okay, so, hey, here's what we're gonna do. If you do not like this person, like, maybe shut the fuck up. I don't know. We gotta eliminate somebody. I don't know what to do. So, hey, if you don't like this person, Ooh, reverse order. Hey, hey, if you don't like this person, let's get really fucking loud. Let's tell them you don't like them. So, hey, if you, hey, if you like the person, be quiet. If you hate them, get loud. Do we hate Eric Zayas or do we like him? Let's go! Let's go! Okay. Okay. Hey, hang out, hang out. Hey, do you guys, do you guys hate Uncle Bam? Dude, I hate to say it, four people here don't like you. Hey, what about JP? Who hates JP? No. Who hates him? Who hates him? Fuck that guy. You know exactly who to go after, right? Hey, this guy is Japanese, German, and something else. I forget. Who hates Zach? All right, and hey, not, not to be belittled, the only female on stage, who hates Shauna Blake? This is one guy, that's really bad. Okay. I think I love it. This is one of those, okay, this is one of those confusing things where I feel like we didn't learn anything at all. So here's what I want you to do. If you like this person, I want you to scream at the top of your lungs, for the longest amount of time possible, okay? Here's what we're gonna do. Everybody, if you enjoy, if you enjoy Shauna Blake, make a bunch of noise for 15 seconds. Let's go! Okay, okay, hey. 15 seconds, if you can handle it. What do we think about Zach? What do we think about Zach? Okay, hey, say less, that's fine. Hey, Zach, thanks for playing. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, round of applause for Zach. He's gonna go choke down a glizzy. Okay, okay, hey. All right, hey, fuck that loser. Uh, <laughs> Don't leave me. I've, I've talked to him five times. We're cool. Hey, really quick, what do we think about JP for 15 seconds? Let's be respectable a little Be bit, nice. okay? 
All right, hey, 15 seconds. What do we think about Uncle Bam? Okay, okay, hey, hey, really quick, don't forget about the other boy in the band. Don't forget about this last dude. Everybody, Eric Zayas. Hey, do me a favor. Promise me you're not gonna beat me up after this, but Bam, could you go stand over there real quick? Thank you. Uncle Bam, hey, round of applause for Uncle Bam. All right, all right. We can't keep doing this shit, guys. We can't keep living this. We gotta move on. You guys deserve it, I deserve it. So this is it. This is our last one, winner take all. Derek Alders is leaving because he's a loser. Bye, Derek. Love you. Okay, good. You can leave if you want to. Uh, really quick. Let me hear it. This is the last time you're going to do it. So if you want it, let me know. Go however long you fucking need to. What about Eric? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Okay. Okay. So, hey, hey, if nothing else, hey, people like you, okay? If nothing else. Hey, really quick. What, what, what about our, what about our lady? What about our main squeeze? What about, what about Miss Hot Lips or Hulahan? What about Shauna Blake? Just like a lot of other white dudes, you are respected around this town too. They like you. They like you. <clears throat> okay, so, really quick. How do we feel about the tallest guy on stage right now, a motherfucker who goes by the name of JP? <laughs> before at the kitchen. I get it. Okay, this is really hard for me to do, but Shauna, yeah. could you do me a favor and could you take that certificate for yeah. funniest joke of the night yes. and go away? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Oh, Shauna Blake! Shauna Blake, everybody! Oh, fuck. Okay. <sighs> okay, hey. Can we get naked and wrestle? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Based on suggestion from JP, the last two finalists are gonna get butt naked and they will wrestle on this stage. Go! Go! Okay. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, I will say that, I will say that bit went further than I thought it would. I really didn't think we were gonna get two unzipped pants, but hey, that's what you get when you vote for boys, okay? If you guys would have voted for Shauna, she would have stayed up here fully clothed. Yeah, bring her back! Bring her back! Whew. Okay, hey. Guys, this is six inches of acrylic, which I'm gonna be honest, I thought six inches was a lot bigger. Um, my fake number isn't gonna be six from now on. But hey, 
for the Central Stand-Up Champ Award. We gotta figure this shit out. Sure really one. quick, let me hear it for Eric Zayas. privilege for me because I've known this man for over 10 years and he's wanted to have sex with me for that long. Everybody, your 2024 Central Stand-Up Champion. Let's hear it for JP. JP. He can't even afford a whole first and last name. He only gets two letters. Let him hear it. JP. Thank everybody so much for coming out tonight. We are going to be doing this again in November. If you guys scan those QR codes, you can find pictures of yourselves. You can find video. Hey, thanks so much for coming out tonight. Get the bar staff. Go get a hot dog if you have it. Have a great fucking night. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Woo!